Welcome to the Alaska TTAP webinar series. The today's presentation is from MARAD, the Marine Administration, and they will be presenting an overview of the United States Marine Highway Program, opportunities for Alaska's inland waterway and coastal communities. Um, several people from MARAD will be involved in the presentation and I will let them introduce themselves. So Vince Marlies, take it away. Hey, thanks again, Vicki. So I'm Vince Mantero. I'm the director of the Office of Ports and Waterways here in Plan uh, in Merritt, and I will uh, pass it on to Tim and Natasha and others for introductions real quick. Yes, uh, uh, good Good morning, I guess. I'm sorry to look at my clock. It's, it's the afternoon here. Um, I'm Tim Pickering, and I um, uh, manage the uh, Marine Highway Program uh, under Vince and uh, Natasha. Good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. My name is Natasha Pavlovich. I am a team lead for Port Development and Intermodal Planning Team. Thank you. Marlise and Chris, did you want to introduce yourselves? Hey, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Marlise Fratinardo, um, and I'm with the Office of Ports and Waterways Planning. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Chris Clark, also with the Office of Ports and Waterway Planning, and uh, based in Washington State. I think that's all of us, Vicki. All right, well, go um, right ahead with uh, presenting. Thank you. Great, thank you again, Vicki. And, and again, thank you to you and Alaska TTAP for hosting this webinar. And again, my name is Vince Mantero, Director of the Office of Ports and Waterways Planning. We're looking forward to sharing with you today the role of MARA in marine highway transportation and in federal funding that's available for waterborne freight projects. Uh, next slide, please, Marlies. There's a bit of a lag. Marlies, is it moving on your end? No, it is not moving. It's very strange. Hmm. Let's see. All right, I'm going to pause the recording real quick until you get the get it moving. Thank you, Vicki. Yeah, thanks. Ah, for some reason. Why don't you close it and reopen it, Mike? Yeah. You're talking again. All right. Uh, thanks again, Vicki, and apologies for some of the, the technical hiccups we had. So this is just a, a brief overview of our agenda for today. Uh, ultimately, I'll, I'll be providing just a very brief overview of my office's uh, programs, um, and then we'll pass it on to Tim to talk a little bit about the Marine Highway Program, then Natasha about other perhaps MARAD or federal funding resources, and then we'll open it up to questions at the end. So. Um, so obviously the, the mission is stated on the slide is for Marin is to foster, promote, and develop the, the maritime industry and to meet the nation's economic and security needs. Obviously, our mission, especially in the Office of Ports and Waterways, it also focuses on supply chain needs and uh, ensuring the intermodal connectivity or our marine transportation system, especially with marine highways. So with that being said, I'd like to just give a, a brief overview of my office's programs and priorities. So, so this is kind of a busy slide, but it does give you a bit of a sense of the complexities involved in kind of the management and development of a port. You see a lot of different acronyms on here, anywhere from our modal partners at FRA and Federal Highway, and other federal agency partners such as EPA, the Coast Guard, NOAA, et cetera. But also more importantly is our partnerships with the states, uh, the DOTs, MPOs, even local stakeholders, and especially with the private sector operators and other stakeholders. So uh, Vince, you may not see, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm still seeing your agenda slide only. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I've moved forward a couple of slides and 
It's not moving on your end? No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. Hmm. Let me... Uh... Let me try to stop sharing here and... Okay, I'm hey, Natasha. Me. Yeah, please do. Okay. Uh, again, apologies for the technical difficulties. So as I was saying, doing a brief recap of the office, I, I wanted to introduce you to the organization of our office, which is the Office of Ports and Waterways, which again, my office is a part of. Our office supports Merritt's mission with outreach efforts and funding programs. We provide grants to maritime and supply chain stakeholders and have expertise in port financing and port infrastructure. So we also assist ports in, in their development plan. So this slide shows some of the office's primary areas. I'd, I'd like to highlight a few offices. So um, the Office of Port Infrastructure Development focuses on the delivery of the Port Infrastructure Development Grant Program and other port-related discretionary grant programs. Obviously my office, the Office of Ports and Waterways works on development and intermodal planning and the US Marine Highway Program. And then the Office of Maritime and Intermodal Route Reach, which provides technical assistance and support to our maritime stakeholders. Uh, the office includes 10 gateway directors, which are kind of our boots on the ground throughout the country, including here in the Northwest Alaska region. So in, in addition to general outreach, this office also manages the U.S. Maritime Transportation System National Advisory Committee, known as MITSNAC. It's a federal advisory committee that advises the U.S. Secretary of Transportation uh, through their maritime administrator on, on matters relating to, to U.S. maritime. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, I just want to give you a brief snapshot of the organization of my office. So if you uh, you bump any anybody from my office, you can finally uh, put names to faces. Uh, again, a number of members of my team are, are here on their webinar today. So uh, next slide, please. So finally, I just want to summarize some of our office's priorities, understanding the needs of the maritime transportation system is central to our stakeholder success. And to support maritime industry stakeholders, my office's work spans these priorities, or as we call them, our lines of effort. This includes management of the Marine uh, Highway Discretionary Grant Program. It includes outreach and coordination, as well as research and planning. And so uh, again, apologies for the technical glitches on this in terms of the overview for, for our office and what my office does, but I do hope that discussing our offices and duties have provided you with a greater understanding of our role in supporting the maritime sector. So um, after that brief introduction, I, I'd like to pass this on to Tim to talk a bit more about the United States Marine Highway Program. Thank you all. Tim? Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> More technical difficulties this time on my end. Um, uh, thank you, Vince. Uh, again, as he said, I'm, I'm Tim Pickering and I manage the Marine Highway Program. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this slide discusses the inherent opportunities in using the nation's waterways to move freight. Uh, the, the waterways are um, the greenest and um, uh, the most efficient way to move, move freight. And um, uh, we are working to uh, integrate the marine highways into the nation's supply chains uh, to uh, increase uh, reliability, resiliency, and um, economic uh, vi vi vitality. Okay, next slide. So the Marine Highway Program has two major activities. Uh, we manage the designation of marine highway routes. That's a process where an application goes uh, up to the secretary to uh, have a route designated. And I'll talk more about the routes themselves in a few moments. And uh, we also manage the discretionary uh, grant program. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, this slide discusses the role of our office in the administration of the grant programs. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that we help to foster 
uh, maritime services, but the Maritime Administration does not operate uh, maritime services. These are public-private partnerships, usually between a public or private port and a and a, a private operator of a barge service or a vessel. Uh, and we, our, our role is to uh, help provide the um, uh, the gap infrastructures to uh, the inf infrastructure gaps in order to uh, uh, to bring the service to uh, fruition. Okay. Next slide, please. So this is how our program is defined in our statute. Um, we can uh, support all freight kinds except pure passenger ferries. Uh, the Federal Transit Administration and other DOT operating agency does have uh, grant funding to support uh, passenger and commuter ferries. Uh, we can now also work with services originating or terminating in Canada and Mexico, as long as it goes to a United States Marine Highway route. Um, the uh, That allows us uh, to keep the capture those trucks uh, before it uh, goes through the congested border crossings and uh, enters our interstate uh, highway system. Uh, one caveat to our program is that uh, our grant funding cannot be used outside of uh, the United States. So there's no, we're not buying equipment in Canada or Mexico to support the service. Uh, this is a list of executive orders uh, that uh, inform our program. These are not uh, specific to our program. These cover um, all uh, government uh, programs. Um, and these cover uh, climate change, racial equity, uh, support for underserved communities, uh, worker organ organizing, and uh, the implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law uh, that was uh, passed in uh, the 2022. Okay. Next slide, please. So our program has done very well in the area of equity. Um, the a uh, requirement of the uh, Justice 40 program is 40% uh, of federal assistance go to underserved communities. And last year, our program awarded nearly nearly 50%, um, uh, 5.8 of $12 million uh, went to historically disadvantaged communities. Okay, so let's switch to the Marine Highway routes. Um, so to be eligible to apply for a Marine Highway grant, your service uh, or your, your city or port must serve a Marine Highway route or routes. So there are now 31 Marine Highway routes that cover 41 states, the District of Columbia, and all five U.S. territories. Uh, the route sponsors, which are typically DO state DOTs, sometimes a port or a municipality, have specific duties under our legislation. Uh, if a private sector applicant, a private business, wants to apply for a grant, which is allowed under our program, uh, they have to get the endorsement of the route sponsor in order to apply. So um, getting the, the route sponsors, uh, keeping those current and, um, and, and expanding the, the, the breadth of the Marine Highway Service or routes is um, a critical role for us to ensure that uh, we can have the most uh, applicants for our funds. So this is the map of the marine highway system. Uh, the routes shown here are approximations, uh, not this, do not necessarily include all the small tributaries, inlets, and bays that are part of the system. Uh, and typically the marine highway routes are numbered in accordance with the interstate highway that they roughly parallel. So the M95 runs down the east coast parallel of the I-95 and the M70 uh, runs uh, across the uh, uh, Midwest uh, paralleling the, uh, the I-70 um, and so forth. Okay, next slide. So closer to home, uh, the uh, M5 Alaska uh, is part of the M5 Marine Highway route that runs down the U.S. West Coast. So this uh, this is a long a long contiguous route that runs uh, from uh, Alaska all the way down to uh, the uh, Mexican border, essentially. But uh, the M5 Alaska part stops at the uh, Canadian border, and that also hosts about ninety percent of the shipments. So. Uh, going to and from Alaska minus um, uh, petroleum products, of course. So the MA-1 uh, covers Cook Inlet, runs up to Anchorage and the Mathanuska and Susitna Rivers. I hope I didn't butcher those. Um, and that is also uh, sponsored by the uh, Mathanuska and Susitna Borough. It's one of the few cities that is actually, uh, or borough cities that's a, uh, a route sponsor on our system. Okay, so the M11 route 
um, was designated in September of this year. And this is by far the largest marine highway route we have um, and uh, allows eligible applicants uh, now along those uh, many, uh, the coastline and the many rivers uh, to apply for the marine highway grants. Next slide. And this is a detailed map uh, showing the M11 route. And as I said before, these are diagrammatic and uh, do not necessarily represent every connection to the waterways. Um, and as you know, most of these villages and towns along this route are very dependent on the water or airports uh, for the movement of passengers and goods. So for us to uh, to connect to this many communities is, is critical for us. And um, hopefully we will be able to uh, provide some federal assistance uh, in this area. Next slide, please. Okay, so I've spoken about eligible applicants. So this is who they are. So a state or a part of a state can apply. Uh, a metropolitan planning organization or regional planning organization can apply. Port authorities and tribal governments uh, one thing that's missing from here is municipalities. We we found that out this year. The uh, sister to this one, we had the M11. We were designating the M79 at the same time, which is in uh, West Virginia and Ohio. And we found out that the city of Morgantown is not eligible to apply, even though they had worked on the application. So um, just to just want to let you know that. But um, so any anyone can apply. The um, private uh, sector uh, operators can also apply. However. Um, they do require, as I said, the endorsement um, from the current Marine Highway Route sponsor. Uh, and by uh, private sectors, we also include uh, owners of facilities, including an Alaska Native Corporation. Okay, next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, before we go. And, and just back, to the just wanted to go over the, the, this is what the funds have typically been used for. Marine ha maritime handling equipment, uh, cargo handling equipment on the land side. Uh, barge construction purchases and modifications and planning efforts to support the development of marine highway services. Sorry, next, next one, your slide. Uh, and this is the, um, shows the dispersion of the marine highway grants. Um, up until a couple of years ago, this was decidedly focused on the East Coast and the uh, lower Mississippi. And we're happy to say that uh, as the routes have expanded and the, the eligible applicants have expanded, we've now uh, got a dispersion from all the way from uh, Florida to uh, uh, as far as American Samoa and up into Alaska. Uh, we have, uh, and I'll go over those, I believe, on the next slide. Yeah, so this year we uh, made an award to the Matanuska Sit in the Borough for uh, $944,000 for the acquisition of a 75 ton uh, crane, which will be used uh, for loading and unloading cargo at Port McKenzie. Uh, and related, we uh, made an award to SeaTac Maritime Service and Marine Services, which is in Washington State. However, that service uh, works solely with Alaska, so it's uh, it's supporting the, the southern end of the supply chain. Next slide. And this slide is uh, just to go over some, uh, we, we often get confused with the Alaska Marine Highway System. Uh, in fact, up until last year, uh, my program's name was the America's Marine Highway Pro uh, Program, so we shared the common acronym, which when I came up to the um, uh, Alaska Harbor Masters meeting caused a lot of confusion. So uh, our legislation was changed uh, to the United States Marine Highway Program, and this shows uh, basically who administers the two programs and the purpose of the two programs. So we just wanted to put this up so you could see the, the differences. And with that, I will pass to Natasha, discuss other merit and federal funding opportunities. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Tim. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. In, in the following slides, I will cover other merit, DOT, and other federal agencies' grant programs. Port Infrastructure Development uh, Program, just like U.S. Marine Highway Program, the Port Infrastructure Development Program, or in short, PIDP, is a discretionary competitive program also administered by MERAD. And for this program, eligible projects shall be located either within the boundary of the port, outside the boundary of the port, and directly related to port operations, or to an intermodal connection to a port. PIDP is intended to benefit coastal seaports, Great Lake ports, inland river ports, helping to improve supply chain reliability through increased port capacity, resilience, 
more efficient operations, reduced port emissions, and new workforce opportunities. In the previous four years, the department has awarded $1.4 billion to nearly 100 projects. And for fiscal year 23 that we just uh, closed, more than $662 million in funding was available for PIDP projects. Some great news. Um, you'll probably hear the announcements of the fiscal year 23 PIDP awards in, is expected this week, we think. On the next slide, I will cover who eligible applicants are and uh, how grant funds have been used so far. I'm not going to uh, go ahead and, and read um, the list of the slide, but just wanted to highlight, um, apart from authorities, port authorities, state and local governments, Indian tribes are also eligible applicants. As you can see on the right side of the slide, grant funds have been used for landside equipment, very similar to what Tim covered, infrastructure, operational improvements, environmental and emission mitigation measures, and other port related activities. This is another merit grant program uh, worth mentioning. This is a small shipyard grant program that supports projects at small shipyards uh, and make where they make capital and related improvements or provide training for workforce and also ship repair. Two recent Alaska recipients in 23 and 2022 are Highmark Marine Fabricators, LLC in Kodiak, and Catalyst Marine Engineering in Seward. If you were at the NTICC conference in Anchorage, which I attended and it was great, at the end of September, you probably saw this slide, which comes from USDOT Routes Initiative. We borrowed it. Uh, it's probably hard to read and interpret the, the charts here at this moment. But what this slide shows is while tribal applicants are a smaller number of applicant pool, in the applicant pool, they tend to outperform other applications and have a high success rate. So great job on that. Other USDOT funding uh, resources. In the next uh, slide, I'll just cover other U USDOT funding resources that support maritime projects. You may be familiar with some of these, but I would like to highlight some important information for each. The first one is Rural and Tribal Assistance Pilot. It has $2 million in funding in 2024, and the NOFA is still pending. The other one is, uh, the second one is Federal Highways Protect uh, Program, which has $300 million in funding available and the NOFA is also pending. The third one is the Thriving Communities Program. And as you can see, uh, the, uh, the letter of interest can be submitted to by November the 15th. So if you're planning to do it, you still have time. Another USDOT uh, grant program worth mentioning is Multimodal Project Discretionary Grant or a short MPDG. What's great about this program is that MPDG allows applicants to prepare one application to apply for consideration under three separate discretionary programs those are infra, mega, and rural. Even though application period closed last August for fiscal year 23 and 4, please be on the lookout for the next opportunity. Federal Highway Formula funding uh, that has also uh, maritime eligible eligibility. In the previous slides, I covered merit and USDOT discretionary grant programs where funds are distributed through a competitive selection process. On the other hand, formula funding is different. Formula funding flows through formulas set by Congress. For example, DOT will distribute formula funds to states, federally recognized tribal recipients, and transit agencies. However, funds may be further allocated to localities as state and tribal or agency at their discretion. The two formula funding programs with maritime eligibility that are 
based in the Federal Highway Administration or CMAC and STBG. The Federal Transit, another interesting one uh, from DOT uh, to share is the Federal Transit Administration's uh, FTA has three grant programs for passenger ferries, uh, passenger ferry grant program, electric or low emitting ferry pilot program, and ferry service for rural communities program. Our suggestion is that you reach out to FTA for additional information on these programs, particularly in regards to eligibility. However, what's important is that FTA's funding is specific to passenger ferries, but if your ferry also carries freight, merit may be more appropriate. So please contact us. Let us know if you have ferries that transport cargo freight as well. Other federal uh, funding resources. On the following slides, I would like to highlight EPA's grant programs that support maritime projects. Beyond uh, USDOT, um, programs, EPA has extensive resources for ports under its port initiative. You probably heard of this. This initiative is very helpful educational resource for online technical assistance. And it provides, they have this case studies, upcoming webinars, past webinars they recorded. The one from this week probably will be posted online soon. EPA has two grant programs and you're probably familiar with them. One of them is DIRA and the other one is Clear Ports Program. Four DIRA applications are due by December 1st. So another great opportunity. If you plan to apply, you still have time. NOFO for EPA 3 billion clean ports is still pending and most likely it will be published earlier next year. In the next slide, I'm going to just cover a couple of uh, grant application tools that can be useful to, to you. I'm sure you're probably uh, getting confused how many programs are out there that I can apply for, which, for which one do I qualify? So it can be hard. DOT realizes that it's a big task and DOT has developed resources for locating funding that fits your project best. I would strongly suggest that you look this up on the DOT website. A DOT Navigator has also discretionary grains dashboard they are the tools that provide community with an overview of discretionary grant opportunities, but it can also help you meet uh, what programs could meet your transportation infrastructure needs. So whether it's the first time you're applying to DOT grant or you're looking for more technical details, DOT Navigator can help you get started. On the next slide, I will just show a couple of more examples, details for the dashboard. The dashboard uh, itself includes federal grant programs outside the DOT that may be of a particular interest to, to rural communities. And please know that dashboard is updated on a weekly basis. So Merit can help you and your stakeholders connect uh, the dots with federal processes and assist you with outreach and federal agencies. There are two other um, tools that may be of assistance to you that uh, you can use to research for federal funds that you, are, you may not be aware of them. The first one is U.S. Committee on the Marine Transportation System, in short, CMTS. They have a federal funding handbook for marine transportation system infrastructure. And um, similar from Merit side, Port Planning and Investment Toolkit and Marine Highway module that's available. As you probably noticed through the presentation, we included links throughout uh, the presentation. So if you're interested to learn more, feel free to uh, explore the programs, agencies and, and our tools. On the next slide, I would like to cover uh, our gateway offices. As a part of Merit's uh, Maritime and Intermodal Outreach, our gateway directors provide, as Vince mentioned earlier, boots on the ground approach. There are 10 gateway directors in regions throughout the country that cover US and its territories. Their role is broad, and but gateway directors can help potential grant applicants 
develop projects in the region that promote overall economic growth. This is not their only role, but I just wanted to highlight this for because the, the theme of this presentation. So what that means to the applicants, uh, the gateway directors are removed from the grant application process review, and they can actually offer direct technical assistance to you, provide you feedback to applicants and, and grants, and navigate you through the federal funding process. You should really get to know your Ameri Gateway directors. And Alaska is part of the Pacific Northwest and Alaska Gateway region with Washington and Oregon included. With that, um, we are very excited uh, to introduce our newest staff member as director of the Pacific Northwest and Alaska Gateway office. Her name is Sochal Castaneda. Sochal's area of responsibility will include the states of Alaska, Oregon, and Washington. And she will um, be starting with Merad uh, next Monday, November the 6th. So welcome, Sochal. I saw you um, on the distribution list. I don't know if you are available maybe to say hi. OK, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you, Natasha. Well, I just want to say hello to everybody on the line. I'm really excited to be starting with Marad next week, and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone. So um, right now you can find me on LinkedIn, and pretty soon I'll have all of my official um, email and phone number for you to be able to reach out to me. But until then, um, you're welcome to reach out to me through anyone else who re, uh, who works at Merad, and I'll look forward to working with y'all soon. Thank you very much for the kind welcome, Natasha. You're welcome, Sasha. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, in conclusion, Merad really thrives to collaborate with across the DOT and other federal agencies. Our goal is to provide consistent and stable funding, technical assistance, and capacity building to, to really help advance maritime intermodal projects and our nation's supply chain. We are especially interested in enhancing the tribal transportation systems and engaging more with the tribes who are seeking maritime technical assistance. So if you want to connect with us, if you want to apply, please let us know. So with that, I would like to uh, turn back uh, the podium to Vince for any uh, closing remarks before we go to Q&A. Thanks, Natasha, and thanks, Tim. Uh, and again, thank you, Vicki, uh, for allowing us to speak for a few minutes about some of our programs. Obviously, there's a lot to digest there. Uh, reiterating that Merritt is, is here to help, whether it's your gateway director or any of our staff here on the call. Um, so again, thank you for the opportunity, Vicki, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. I do see one in the chat box already, but defer to you, Vicki. Um, all right. Well, I will start with the one that got posted in the chat box during the presentation, and then hopefully other people can raise their hands for answer for asking questions live. Um, specifically, the one in the chat box was posted by Jerry Hope. Uh, Sitka, Alaska, has been struggling for a number of decades now on getting improved, much-needed increased ferry service because of the ferry location. The amount of time, distance, and tide narrows, there's been decreasing ferry service to Sitka. Since the 1960s, there's been efforts to relocate the ferry terminal to the eastern side of the island where there's a mainline ferry route to other communities run by the Alaska Marine Highway Systems. In addition, the Alaska DOT and PF has studied this in alternate routes. The question is what positive role would Marad have in working to relocate the Sitka Ferry Terminal to the eastern side of Baranoff Island, which would improve ferry service to the fifth largest city in Alaska? Great. I'll, I think I'll take a shot at that. And uh, Jerry, thank you for your question. And I, I think it's maybe a common theme we heard when we were all up in, in Anchorage a, a few weeks ago. Uh, many of the or most of the merit programs we just mentioned are 
uh, largely related to moving freight. So, for example, the America's Marine Highway or United States, sorry, Tim, United States Marine Highway Program, uh, we can help with uh, passenger ferries only if it allows the movement of cargo as well. So solely dedicated passenger ferries, uh, Marad doesn't have a program for that. However, I would say that we do work closely with FTA on kind of combined initiatives in terms of how our programs can work with their own passenger ferry programs. So I would say, obviously, uh, work with your FTA liaison. And if not, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to kind of connect the dots and, and have that conversation, so. Hey. Yeah. All right, thank you, Vince. Um, anyone, did anyone else have questions, want to raise their hand? This presentation will also be posted on YouTube uh, the recording of it, that is, and people are welcome to reach out to any of those who were in the panel to talking today. Um, hey, Tim, looks like there's a question about the M11 designation and the application. Uh, yes, the uh, we, we can provide the application. It was, uh, the, the application was um, uh, done uh, by the uh, uh, Alaska Department of Transportation and uh, Public Facilities, and um, so we can uh, we can certainly provide that uh, uh, to you. And I see Jerry said the uh, Alaska Marine Highway System does include freight. So um, so we can discuss that. I I'd, I'd like to probably learn more about that as well. Uh, but uh, my program, um, while I would love to to help, uh, the the level of funding uh, that I have uh, would not uh, uh, put a dent in a new terminal. That's probably more of a uh, a port infrastructure development program or, or one of the larger infrastructure uh, programs like uh, build or, or or raise or something like that. All right. Jerry, do you want to raise your hand and I will let you speak if you have additional things to follow up here? Okay. Yeah. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, this connection and this discussion, the presentation, particularly as a follow-up from NTICC up in Anchorage toward the end of September. And I guess some of the things that we are really interested in, perhaps, is uh, the linking of being able to get a couple of different grant resources along with what's offered by N. And Mayred, Mayred, I, for example, reconnecting communities and that kind of thing. There are, I see that your limitation is based on freight, but even freight along with uh, passengers is a, a real critical component, even in Southeast, uh, given the, let's see, I guess the increasing rate of freight costs. Uh, it seems like it's happening rapidly too, but um, I, I guess we'll just kind of leave it there and perhaps work at uh, following up with some email discussions and perhaps other opportunities to uh, to meet with tribes. Yeah, Jerry, I'd be happy to uh, discuss and uh, we can hopefully I can get your uh, contact information um, from uh, uh, Victoria. Um, as it, my grant program is typically would be if you had an existing service and, and you wanted to buy like a zero emission forklift or a crane or something to help load more efficiently or more cargo, uh, something to increase capacity, something of that nature, um, you know, at, at an existing terminal. But as I said, you know, we, we actually, our, our legislation says that we cannot build facilities uh, with our funds unless um, the applicant can prove it is uh, necessary for the, the, creation or, or expansion of the marine highway service um so uh, yeah but again we're we're, we're very fun funding limited so we don't pour concrete very often it's uh it doesn't go very far so uh we we depend on the other infrastructure programs to cover those sorts of things and uh i just add on to that uh don't mean, mean to put socio on the spot but this is obviously a good opportunity to uh get to know the new gateway director in that area jerry and we could be happy to 
again, get everybody together to have that conversation, see uh, if there are opportunities beyond the United States Marine Highway Program. Uh, and again, uh, working closely with uh, whether it's the state, FTA or, or others. So I think in, in that way, Sochi will be a, a great resource for you as well. Yeah, I, I work very closely with the, the program manager for the FTA ferry program. So because uh, we get a lot of questions that I have to direct over to that office. So we can certainly put you in touch with them as well. All right. So it sounds like, Jerry, that that's a, a follow up offline to work that. and. Um... Hopefully that connections will grow and facilitate improvements for Sitka. Anyone else have a question, either want to raise their hand or post something in the chat? So, so this is Sochi here. Um, just want to say I'll look forward to the follow-up conversation and we'll be sharing my contact information um, within the next couple of weeks as soon as that becomes available. All right, thank you, Sochi. All right, um, in that case, oh, more Jerry. Um, Jerry's also posting, he's president of the Alaska Tribal Transportation Work Group, and there will be a tribal, the annual Alaska Tribal Transportation Symposium will be in March in Anchorage. And they, it sounds like he'd like to follow up with you all about coming to that and possibly working on further issues related to Alaska's marine highways at that meeting. So again, Jerry, um, you guys need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? If anybody else has anything they want to bring up, so, if Jerry, not, then you, I'm just going to send you an email and I copied Vince and Natasha. So well, we all have each other's contact information now. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.